Welcome to the dojo, and welcome to the School of Gnarls. My name is Tom. If you don't know me, I've been whitewater canoeing for the last 10 years and learning the hard way so you don't have to. My goal here, my intentions with this YouTube series, The School of Gnarls, is to lay things out in a way that beginner to intermediate canoeists can smoothly transition into the next phases of whitewater canoeing as they progress and strive to achieve total technical proficiency in whitewater mastery. This is a lifelong pursuit, a pursuit that inevitably leads us to see beautiful places, meet awesome people, and get awesome experiences. And let me just tell you, it's awesome. So my thought is, and my belief, is that with the right coaching and things laid out the right way, as long as somebody has the desire and the dedication, we can get there. We can do what we want to do on the river. We can utilize power and finesse, utilize the river to our advantage and move all over the place with ease. In this episode, we're gonna cover the basic strokes and the concept of carving in a canoe. This is really the basic foundation of where canoeing starts. You're probably thinking, well, hell, I don't even have a canoe. Well, you can look on Craigslist. You can usually find canoes on there for cheap. You can contact your local retailer, or you could contact your local to North America, North American Silver Birch Canoe Distributor, and he can set you up with the canoe to match your height and weight to achieve your desires and dreams. So, in this episode, like I said, we're gonna cover the basic strokes. And it's the understanding that with good technique, we can really generate much more power and get much more efficiency out of our strokes. That's why in these early stages, it's very important to focus on technique and make sure that good technique and smoothness are what we're aiming for. We can add the explosiveness later, but right now we're just gonna really focus on our techniques. So you get yourself a canoe, you get yourself a PFD a paddle and a helmet. And the key is finding a, a local stream, a local river that is nice, calm, where things are slowed down and you can take the time to focus on what you're doing. We don't want to be out there just battling, you know, just trying to stay with the current and not focusing on technique. We really want to get that, that good lean, that forward power and generate our power from the core, from our legs and putting it all together. We'll do this now, we'll build this, and then as we progress as canoeists, it's only there to help us later. So I'm glad you're here. Hopefully you're joining me with an open heart with the intention of getting better. That's what we want. I'm hoping to collaborate with some of the uh, best canoers of our generation and really uh, light the way and and uh, give you an example of how it's done. So we're fortunate enough here to have a creek at the house. Let's go out and uh, take some canoes. These are nice, dude. These are broadlands. These are nice. Yeah, real nice. These uh, three layer polyethylene. You can scrape on rocks all day. So we just go out here at low flow and scrape on rocks and it doesn't even matter. T4 Max, Royal X, you're taking, taking wear off the boat. You're scraping dollars off. These are workhorses. They weigh a little bit more, but they're really good for people that canoe a lot. For boats today, we have the Silver Birch Rebel, the Firefly 14, and the Broadland 16 for our camera crew. 
I chose to teach in the Firefly 14 because it is a great overall canoe that requires good technique to maneuver effectively. This is also why I started Rachel off in a Rebel 11, to fully learn these concepts before we move on to a boat that spins on a dime with little effort. For, uh, for break time. Break time. Let's get it. So, we have our by law required PFDs are always smart to have on the water because we don't have gills and if we go underwater we can't breathe. This keeps us afloat. That's why we bring our PFDs from ground here. Where is your at compared to mine? Well, they used to say your paddle should really be up to your chin. Except what happened with modern canoeing is canoes got a lot shorter and what we're finding is a shorter paddle allows for more finesse, ability to swing it around. So you can see here, mine's a little shorter than where hers is at. So really we want to bring yours down a little bit. And honestly, I'm thinking about going a little bit lower than this. So, uh, but we got some longer boats here in the Rebel and the Firefly and um, a longer paddle really equates to more power anyways. So that's uh, what we need. Yeah, we need more power. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's go do it. The information in this video is rather basic on purpose. It is meant to serve as a guide. The key at this stage is understanding basic concepts and spending time on the water. We're gonna head upstream. The lighting's not very good here, so a uh, nice little warm up, getting our boats, get in on our knees, keep our balance nice and low, and we're just gonna kinda truck up and, and get there and get all set up, start going over stuff. I am electing not to wear my PFD to better demonstrate some of these strokes. You should always wear a PFD. It is the best way to avoid drowning on the river. Camera boat. <laughs> This is Rachel. She's been canoeing for a few months now, and she's still trying to figure out which side she's uh, she prefers. <laughs> That's the point we're at. So we're gonna cover um, a few strokes today. One's gonna be the forward stroke, another's gonna be a draw stroke and that's for turning the bow another is going to be a pry this is these are all meant to maneuver the canoe in a certain way so the biggest most important tip i have for beginner canoeists is you know find yourself shoulder width apart here something nice and comfortable when you reach forward we want to reach forward for our stroke we're going to be arcing our back and our biggest focus is making sure that our paddle is perpendicular to the water. So if our water is right here, our paddle needs to be straight up and down. We don't want to be pulling like this and pulling to the bottom of the surface. So like you'll see a lot of people stroke like this and they're stroking down and they're losing efficiency and they're not getting power. So the biggest key is we're vertical and we're pulling straight back. We're pulling with our core and we're pulling with our bottom arm our top arm is guiding to make sure that the paddle stays vertical. We're pulling back as a unit. You catch that? Sure did. So let's see if, let's see Rachel's stroke here based on, based on that. Let's see how she, she how she throws. Yep, you can just go sideways or whatever. And Start with a, uh... we're going to cover this stroke in a little bit, but another one is going to be the cross stroke, which really is going to help us start, start us off in a, in a forward path. So I can come over here, just throw one sloppy cross stroke, get the boat turning to my paddle side, and stroke.
So what I'm, I'm trying to cover now is the ability to stay straight, which enter the pry stroke, which is a counteracting the fact that when I paddle forward, the boat wants to turn away from the paddle. No matter how vertical I keep it, so I can paddle wide and turn the boat even more. And that's why we want to keep our paddle vertical to keep forward momentum and not turning momentum on a power stroke. So how do I straighten the boat with a forward stroke? And that's the pry at the end. So I come forward and down here I'm prying towards the back of the boat. The concept of a pry is you're pushing the paddle away from your boat. And what this does is it moves the boat away from your paddle. If we do it back here, it's gonna cause the stern to move away. The boat's gonna turn like that. So that's a turning stroke. If I do it here in the center, and this is why, this is why the center of the boat is not efficient to try to turn the boat. So if I throw a pry right here, I'm shifting the entire boat sideways. So you see how there's no turn? That's why if you do this, it's not really effective here. You gotta be further back. So here's a, here's a demonstration, you ready? Okay, so I'm neutral. Here's a pry from the back of the canoe. Watch what happens. The boat turns. Neutral, here's a pry from the center of the canoe. You see how the boat doesn't turn? That's why these turning strokes aren't effective from the center of the boat. So if I'm trying to counteract a turn here, my pry is in the back. It's not here because it's not doing anything. So forward, pry in the back. See how my paddle is outside the boat? And I'm gonna start with a cross stroke, it gets me going forward. I'm here and pry. Forward, pull, cry. Forward, pull, cry. Looking good, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Good forward stroke. Some people see, lack that. See how forward. since we started, her pry is a lot further back now? Yep. And, and that's yes. the correction. Yes. That's the yes. correction yes. because she's trying, she keeps turning when she does it here. Yes. And now she's doing it here and we're nice and straight. And we were out here for about five, 10 minutes, just like that. Now she just needs to practice a little bit more. While we're here, because, because this is the very basis of canoeing, this is where it all started. I think the Indians probably invented this one, especially with a traditional style canoe like the Firefly. You gotta understand that a forward stroke into a pry, this is a whitewater pry. That's the move, white water stroke. On flat water, the correction stroke is here, thumb down, paddle goes away from the boat, J stroke. Here, thumb down, J stroke. That's the most efficient way to paddle in a straight line on a carve. But we don't do it because we paddle white water. I don't do it because I don't like the, I don't like that. But that's what the water walker was doing. Bill Mason, the Indians, that's how they choose to paddle. So again, it's here, thumb down, and that corrects the boat. Here, thumb down, I hold, correct the boat. Always want to get the boat turning back to your paddle side before you take your next stroke. Here, correct the boat, and boom. Your paddle. Flip you it. see how it's pointing around? No. no. That's not the position I was talking about. No. So you keep rotating it out a little bit more. You're right here. Yeah. You need to rotate it out to there. So a little bit more wrist rotation. You're here. Yeah. You're here. Like Good. Good. Jesus. So, so it's coming up over. Up okay. over. And that's what corrects. It's one stroke. It's here. It's down. And I'm out. It's the flick at the end of that stroke that straightens the boat. And it's hard to feel. It's weird, like not letting go with this top hand. Or yeah, not you want to do like a rotate little your, twirl. Rotate your wrist down, so like this. Rachel, right here. Yep. Yep. And then out. Good. It's looking better. Okay. 
Get the boat turning to my onside first. Just a little bit, here we go. Stroke, rotate down, wait for the boat to come back to my onside. Stroke again. Onside, stroke again. Focus on keeping your, your paddle. There you go, that's looking good. Now wait, wait, hold it. Yeah, you're gonna have to work on that one. Yeah. So she's gonna have to work on that one. It's an awkward stroke to do. We used to always teach this as a basic stroke, but that's not where canoeing's at anymore. That's why we do a forward stroke and a whitewater pry. It took her five minutes to figure out how to go straight and carve that way. We're gonna rotate our fingers down. This is, it's, it's not a good position to be in like this in whitewater. That's why we don't do it. But we teach it anyways because it's canoeing, it's knowledge. Look it up, J-stroke. Maybe we'll cover it in a later episode. I hope not. That's looking good. Hey! <laughs> hey! I just need you to doubt me. That's I'm looking good. good. <laughs> just like, all right, I just need to doubt. Yep, just keep paddling. Yep. Okay. Here you go, back on me. So while, while Rachel's paddling around the background, because if you're at the early stages in canoeing, in my opinion, my professional opinion, the, the best thing that you can do is throw strokes. I always tell people 10,000 strokes, 10,000 forward strokes, 10,000 draw strokes, 10,000 prize, 10,000 cross strokes. So, so far we've covered a forward stroke. We're gonna lean forward, we're gonna stay vertical, and we're gonna pull with our bottom arm using our top arm as a guide to stay perpendicular to water and use our core. We're gonna fit in a longer boat, we're gonna finish further back. In a shorter boat, it's gonna be more of a short, more up. Okay? So, the main other basic stroke that I kinda of wanna go over is called a draw stroke. And that's the counterpart to the draw, to the pry stroke. So pry, you're prying away from the boat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go away from the paddle here. My boat's gonna work away. I'm shifting this way. A draw stroke, Let's focus, on, let's focus on staying nice and perpendicular, always, because we want power, always perpendicular, not like this, okay? Lean out, and we're pulling towards the boat. Right here, pulling towards the boat. This is a draw, I'm drawing the paddle into the boat, and my boat's coming towards the paddle, and I can shift in a different direction. So, if you take all this knowledge put together about turning strokes, from the back of the boat and from the front of the boat, we know that a pry is gonna make our stern move away from the paddle and turn it that way. So what do you think a draw stroke does towards the back of the boat? The, pa the boat's gonna move towards the paddle. So if I wanted a way, let's say after I was a pry, I wanted to turn the boat real quick, I could do a draw stroke in the back. Just enough to turn the boat, okay? I can make the boat turn in the opposite direction from the front. So I pull here, my end goes that way. If I pull here, my front end goes that way. So I'm up here, I reach forward and I pull it. And now I'm spinning towards you guys, just like that. When I'm throwing these strokes, my focus is I wanna to try to get my body forward because I know that the effectiveness has to do with how far forward, how far close to the bow I am. So I'm here and I pull and I'm turning. You're probably wondering what I'm doing with my paddle in the water. Well, if you're just starting out, you can just draw like this. Come out, we'll move over here. Just keep, we'll, we'll yep. change direction, we're okay. gonna drift into the shade. If you're just starting out, your draw stroke's gonna look like this. Okay, it's not a very smooth way to get the paddle away from the boat. So what I'm doing is called sculling. It's I come in, I turn the blade facing out so it slices. And I come back here. So I'm able to chain multiple draw strokes together to get a more, a faster, more efficient desired result, essentially in one quick move. I'm right here, bam, 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 and now I'm going. 
So. So for for practice sakes on a draw stroke and sculling, the easiest way to start out is let's start to the center of the boat, which is really just going to shift the entire boat because I'm not towards the front, I'm not towards the back. Right here, I want to shift this boat sideways and turn the blade. I'm coming out. Turn the blade. Point your thumb away. All the top hand. All the top hand. Pretty good. Oh, I can't see what that looks like. So the important part is that you're pulling the paddle straight into the boat. That's where our effective point is. Straight into the boat and we turn it out and in. Out, in. Out, in. It takes a little bit of feel, but that's why we do 10,000 strokes. You'll get there, it's not very hard. Okay, get it over top. Like you do some of these yoga stretches here. This is why yoga is important. This is a side lean right here. We're reaching out, okay? We're here, we're reaching out. Try to keep our paddle perpendicular. Pull, yep, yeah, there you go. Excellent. So, that's our forward stroke. That's our pry stroke. That's our draw stroke. The front and back of the boat, draw and pry, those are the concept of turning the boat. We should essentially have everything that we need to fully control these canoes on flat water right now. Would you say so? Feel good? Yeah. We feel pretty good. Let's go head up to another spot. It's time to maybe take a, take a quick break and, and do some fishing. in a canoe we ran like class three a couple times and I'm like I think you're ready for all day class four and he went out and did an awesome time we didn't really teach him anything he just looked really good Rachel she is new she just started paddling three months ago and, um, and but the difference is he's a class four paddler he's paddling an agent and that boat's so good that he could not even have a lot of these concepts down and the agent's gonna respond well. You don't really need it. That boat just turns, right? Like, you would never notice technique in that agent. Yeah. And that's part of the problem with some of these uh, new age modern canoes is they're really doing a lot of the work for you. It, you don't get a lot of the concepts that a longer boat would teach you. So, if you're a beginning boater, I mean, you got the, you got the money, the resources, look on Craigslist. Get yourself a longer canoe in addition to your whitewater canoe, because because really this is a school in Arles. We're here to run whitewater, hit boofs, and right. you know. But then to ultimately the take that down some class three is like yeah. And then you take you take a longer bout on class three, and you're gonna have to demonstrate true skill. Yeah, you can't paddle an agent off the bat and then try to do uh, same run right in a fire club. No, you get absolutely not. You won't know what to do. You don't have the, you won't have the boat control when you need it. Yeah. It's too fast. She's looking really good. We on? One, two, three, we're on. Our mic should we be good? And what talk I got a lapel mic. I think I got a lapel mic, I think. I got a mic right here. So 
So you're probably wondering, what's that, uh, what's that weird stroke that I keep doing over here? And that is what I consider to be the difference maker between a good canoeist and an okay canoeist, is the quality of cross stroke. I could pretty much tell how good somebody is just by looking at their cross stroke. It tells me everything I need to know. So let's cover that real quick because it's one of the most important strokes and it's gonna allow us to basically be like a kayaker where we're left, right, left, right. So the biggest key is making sure that it feels comfortable. The, the best, some of the best advice I have for a cross stroke is it's always these same concepts which we're gonna stay, we're gonna stay perpendicular to the boat right here, okay? We're reaching forward and that's where we're at. And we're gonna come back, we're gonna pull with our bottom arm and we're gonna keep our top hand same way. It's more like a guide to keep the paddle straight up and down as we pull with our core and bring it back. I'm gonna throw my hips forward and boom. Okay, right here. So I'm nice and vertical. I'm grabbed into the bottom right now just to show. I'm lean forward. I'm gonna pull with my bottom arm and I'm gonna guide with my top arm. A lot of what people do when they first learn in this stroke, it's a fulcrum effect. And they pull with the bottom and they push with the top which goes like that, and it's sloppy. My arms are all backwards. We don't want to do this, okay? So, like I said, our top hand is a guide. We're here. I don't even need to close this hand necessarily. I'm just gonna push a little bit just to keep it nice and line and everything kind of 90 degree perpendicular. Nice vertical stroke. We're pulling with our core, pulling with the bottom arm and the top arms going to be used as a guide. Back. My whole body works in tangent with itself. It's one unit. One unit right here. Core, hips, arms. One. So if you're going to focus on one stroke that you're going to get down and make sure you throw 10,000 of, you should throw 10,000 cross strokes. And you want to get really familiar with that, that stroke because until that stroke starts feeling comfortable, and I assure you, at first, it will not feel comfortable, but make sure you pay attention to the things that I'm saying in this video. Get this stroke down, make it feel comfortable, and you won't have a bottleneck. You'll be able to go wherever you want to go. It's all about this cross stroke. You gotta develop it. So I'm pulling, all is one. So if you remember when we covered the draw stroke, we covered, I called it a skull. It's not a skull, it's really a slice out, where we turn the paddle and slice out from the boat. That's going to be our in-water recovery for a cross stroke, okay? So I'm here, and you can start by just coming out of the water, but that's not the way. The way is, back it up here, the way is I'm going to just pull, stroke forward, turn the paddle parallel with the boat, maybe facing a little bit out, away from the boat so it slices out, and then I come back. So slice out, come back. So right now, one of the drills I'm having her do is just throw nothing but cross strokes. Stroke through, turn the blade out, slice through the water, and stroke through again. She's just gonna spin in circles now, but how many strokes is that? Because remember how many strokes do we gotta get to? 10,000 strokes. There you go. And the more of these strokes that she throws, the more comfortable she's gonna feel. So when we get out in rapids and things start happening quickly, all this is down. This is why we start at the base level. We start nice, easy water, and we slowly work our way up. That's the best way to do things. How's that feeling? Better. Better. It's looking good. It's that, it's that bottom arm pull, isn't it? Yeah. You're going to develop. You're going to, if you do this right, you're going to end up turning into a lobster because you're, you're, your strong arm is just really pulling that bottom arm to keep the paddle vertical.
never trying to scream in silence Never look back, no use All I ever wanted was to live on an island I never let a good man down Have you ever seen a sad man smiling? I never understood this world All I really want to live it up, live it up now That's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you're following along with the school and you're participating, keys to pay attention to are a lot of the key points that I had. And really where I want you to be until the next episode is 10,000 strokes. Get out there, get paddling, get outdoors, and soak in some sun. Summer's here, so uh, let's get at it. Episode two, I'm hoping to meet up with uh, Travis Overstreet and Jared Jones. We're gonna 
I'm gonna cover some of the next steps and what we can put together with all these strokes. So uh, get paddling and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. There's a like button, subscribe button, uh, comments if you want. I know we missed a lot of stuff. It's just, it's, it's a lot of stuff to cover. So um, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.